Why? Hello and welcome everybody. So today I wanted to go ahead and give you guys probably one of the final updates for the Righteous Fire Explode Chieftain. Now do know that this character can be played on a number of ascendancies ranging from Chieftain, Juggernaut, uh, even Inquisitor, Elementalist. I'd probably say Inquisitor is the least suited for this, uh, but it still could work. With that being said, I'm going to go ahead and run two maps for you guys, show you what the build looks like. In the second map I'm going to run, I'm actually going to remove a lot of the expensive items to give you a more realistic setup of what it would be like if you don't have a lot of currency. In terms of investment, I can't really evaluate. I'm terrible at softcore economy. I'm going to guess this character is like 30, 40 divines, but half of that is literally my Oriath's End and my Unnatural Instinct. Okay. With that being said, let's go jump shit. into a quick Fungal Hollow here. Uh, this character is level 98. We have died about five times to some really crazy, stupid... I'm pretty sure three of my deaths were bearers because I could not see the floor. This is your eternity. Hey, look, a six lane. This character is called Pox Flashbang. Uh, I'm sure you can guess why it's called Pox Flashbang. Now, the purpose of a character like this, I do oftentimes get a lot of questions of, is this just a better version of the Juggernaut League starter? And the answer to that is actually no, it's not. It looks really crazy, don't get me wrong, but the reason it looks crazy is because we are utilizing a mechanic called Explode to basically elevate our clear uh, so that you can get something like this. Your actual DPS is not a reflection at all at how fast you clear with a build like this. Why is this box on opening? Hold on. So one of the main things to understand is whenever you're playing an explode build like this, right? you are essentially sacrificing pretty much everything in terms of acquiring Explode. So you're sacrificing like a gear piece. In this instance, I'm using Assonance Gentle Touch instead of say Legacy of Fury. Uh, and then I'm sacrificing some points on my tree for a fire conversion. And then on top of that, uh, I'm also going ahead and removing um, points into a cluster jewel to get an elemental proliferation. So those are the main things, and we'll talk about that more in detail once we finish uh, these two maps real fast. This character can do Crucible, but again, the purpose of this is more for showcasing map clear, so I'm going to be avoiding that. Okay, so this one is done. So what I'm going to do for this next map is we're going to run our favorite map, Toxic Sewers, and I'm actually going to just straight up remove the Unnatural Instinct here, the very expensive jewel that's giving me 36% AoE. And I'm going to remove the Oriath's end, and this puts it a lot more in line with what I guess you could say the average player could afford, right? It's still all right. It's not too bad. One of the biggest things is with these points here, one, two, three, four, five, you could directly take these and go into like a medium cluster jewel for AoE, and that will help make up a lot of the AoE you lose on the, uh, what is it called? On the Unnatural Instinct. I actually switch MTX to my new favorite. Been, I've been really enjoying the Transcendence yeah, MTX. You can see the results are still quite similar. Uh, I just exploded that whole room, for example. I wasn't even in there. Um, just, just you know, some of the main differences is when you have Oriath's End, you... Um, how do I explain this? When you have Oriath's End, you'll kill rare monsters a lot faster because what happens is you get a stronger proliferation from your Oriaths than from your Assonance. So oftentimes you are charging through and you get the really meaty Oriath explosion, which number one helps chain and number two just does way more damage than the Assonance. I believe they can both proc off of the same target unless they have changed explode mechanics. I don't think they did, but n never 100% sure with GGG. Um, yeah, and then the Unnatural Instinct just gives more AoE, so it helps create a smoother chain. Uh, I'll also, I believe, and I could be wrong here, when you're playing with other players, like say, I don't know, you're just doing multiplayer content, 
um, higher damage health explodes are going to help a lot just for smoother consistent clearing and then of course for your map mods right there's a lot of map mods that can make it feel a little bit less fun like life is energy shield uh monster chaos res etc um, avoid ailments having another source of explode can help alongside that Zero mobs remaining, let's go. Okay, so now let's talk about explode mechanics and how essentially everything works. So step one, for this setup, we're using a pair of Asin's Gentle Touch. Two reasons. Number one, actually three reasons. Number one, it's guaranteed explode on a cursed enemy. But why is this good? This means that there is a 100% chance that you are exploding a target. Not just a small percentage, but a literal 100%. The reason the 100% is so valuable is it's so consistent, right? If you have enough damage to kill a mob, which triggers another mob to die, you effectively have enough damage to kill that whole pack, and then depending on how dense your maps are, to continue that chain, right? Now, some things to talk about this are, if you notice while I was mapping, monsters had uh, elemental weakness over them even though they were dead. That is because enemies killed near corpses affected by your curses um, oh, sorry, not that one. Non-curse, non-aura curses you inflict are not removed from dying enemies. So what this leads us to is the next part. If a mob happened to walk next to the mob that just died and dies from the elemental proliferation, it will also explode, creating a chain. Anyway, enough talk about that. Uh, one other thing to note is that you'll notice with these gloves, they curse enemies with temporal chains on hit. We want to bypass that for a more usable curse for our build. I recommend flammability or elemental weakness. The implicit elemental weakness on hit basically overrides the temporal chains and does not let it apply because we only have a one curse limit. If you can't find a pair of assonance with elemental weakness on hit or they're too expensive, you can always go with a warlord ring that I don't have at the moment with curse enemies with flammability on hit. Yes, this does lower your single target. But this character is designed more for exploding, you know, screens literally, right? Okay, with that being said, you got your pair of Assonance Gloves, what do you do now? Well, this right here is when you have to understand that Assonance is a physical damage explosion. Because it is a physical, we want to convert it to fire, right? Main reason for fire is we're playing a Righteous Fire build, right? Works out really well. All those sources of fire damage, fire multi, etc. So by doing this, we take Avatar of Fire, which is 50% conversion. Then we go ahead and on any fire mastery, we take 40% physical conversion. That immediately gives you 90% physical damage conversion. If you want to, as a chieftain, you can take uh, Namahu's Flame Advance. I personally do not. That's entirely up to you. Remember, you do have flexibility with your ascendancies. Now, um, going a little bit deeper into this, after you have converted to fire, what is the next step? The next step, in my opinion, is making sure you have a meaningful amount of ignite chance. This can work as on, on little as 40-30%, but of course the higher your Ignite Chance is, the more consistent things are going to feel. The reason you want Ignite Chance is because you're going to be using a Fan the Flames Cluster Jewel. Now if you don't have Fan the Flames Cluster Jewel, and you're not using Assonance, say you're doing Explodey with only Oriath's End, or you're doing Explodey with a Body Armor, then you have the ability to actually use Eldritch Implicits to get, um, essentially, Fan the Flames on your Eldritch Implicit, which is pretty cool too. So now your explode actually occurs, it's converted to fire, it rolls the chance to ignite, and then because it rolls the chance to ignite, it rolls in elemental proliferation. This right here, the proliferation, is very key to having the chains continue. Because what can happen is you could charge into a pack of mobs, and maybe you only do like 90% of their health. If you triggered one ignite, the fan the flames would basically kill everything in that pack because it's an AoE, right? So this is very important. All right, so now that we have talked about that, let's cover a few more things. Why am I playing Chieftain? 
Well, the number one reason, honestly, why I'm playing Chieftain is I just wanted to try it out. Like, truly, I've played a lot of Juggernauts, I've played a lot of Inquisitor, and I don't really feel like playing Elementalist, so I wanted to see what Chieftain offers. So Chieftain gets one of the strongest defensive nodes, Sallow Cleansing Water. This is solely for survivability, not for anything else. Um, this gets RF running very early, just like a Juggernaut, um, so it just feels really good. Unaffected by Ignite, doesn't really matter that much. 20% life recovery if you've taken fire damage from an enemy hit is... 100% uptime when you are mapping. The physical damage from hits taken as fire is a great defensive layer, and the 100% fire res is just good all around. The more uh, flexibility you have with resistance, the more aggressive you can gear your character. So this is what I went with to start. Next up, I grabbed Ramako's Sunlight. Very strong node. Uh, 25 fire multi is a ton, especially after them removing the fire multi from the mastery. Can, of course, make that back up with... Uh, uh, you know, the, the Crucible Tree, but still, it, it's a very strong node. The chance to ignite is big quality of life for our explosion, and the damage penetrate actually works for the explode because it's considered a hit. Also pretty cool. Cover enemies in ash on hit. This is incredibly strong. Um, I learned a while ago that using Infernal Cry on bosses doesn't give you a full value of cover and ash because War Cry scale off of power, this is just a straight up, they take 20% increased damage. But why is that good? Because our explode is fire-based. So when the explosion explodes, it hits the target and creates the proliferation, which then makes them take 20% increase and slows them to keep them stuck inside there. Not that the slow is super beneficial, but yeah. The 10% fire and the leech are useless here. We'll explain in a minute. So right on, uh, we get... Penetration for the explosion, chance to ignite, fire multi for the prolif, 20% increased damage, and, well, they take 20%. Balako Storm Embrace is another damage multiplier that feels a little bit weird to use, but I kind of like it. So, essentially, we gain 15% more damage if we have lost an endurance charge in the past 8 seconds. The reasoning this is cool is that is kind of like a global damage multiplier, so that applies to the explosion, right? And all you have to do for that is I run a mortal call on left click. And while I am mapping, it's just going to trigger the uh, the pull from the endurance charges essentially and just keep the damage up permanently while giving a great defensive benefit. All right, so now that that has pretty much been talked about, one other key mechanic that I am using that you do not have to. So there's this body armor called Blundelbore and I have been a big fan of it because it's fun, right? You get a permanent lesser brutal shrine, you get a permanent lesser massive shrine, this gives you really nice AoE. So if I were to just take this off, for example, let me put my jewel back in here. This body armor is giving me like, what is that, 35% AoE? It's pretty cool, man. It's fun. Um, and it gives you damage, which is pretty cool. Downside of this body armor is that uh, you cannot normally use this in a build because it costs 760 strength. But how do we how do we bypass that? We bypass that by using Elegant Hubris. Elegant Hubris makes it so that attributes don't matter for our build um, because we get this keystone called Supreme Ostentation. Sorry, this is what matters. Still, still pretty early for me. Um, the reason this is good is we ignore all attribute requirements, which means even our dex and intelligence, we don't have to worry about. The reasoning this is good is in RF builds, we want like Awakened Swift Affliction, which takes a lot of dexterity. Same thing with like your faster attacks, Blood Rage if you're using that. Um, just a bunch of different things. Uh, one other interesting thing about Supreme Ostentation, though, um, is that, not, sorry, Elegant Hubris, is that if you watched my Timeless Jewel video yesterday that I put out, you can actually get some really good nodes with this. So, for example, I am getting 160% minion damage via Slumlords, which is also giving the explosion that minion, not, well, global damage because of Spiritual Aid. Spiritual Aid is very strong with Explode builds like this. Um, so we're basically getting close to 300% minion damage just from the Pathing to Spiritual Aid, uh, Retribution, the Double Slum Lords, and then the Weapon Craft that we follow on the website. So that is all pretty much synergizing extremely well together. And you don't have to do this setup. This setup is more for fun. It's not anything crazy min-maxed, right? Um, yeah, so now that we've done that, let's talk about the rest of the gear. So if you've watched anything about my Righteous Fire Guides... 90% of this info is barely the same, right? So let's get started. Uh, weapon. Bought a Fracture Dot Multi Weapon for one Divine. 
spent about 100 essences, which was about maybe a divine or so, to craft myself a weapon I could use to 100. Done. In here, I'm currently using uh, Urgent Orders, Enduring Cry, and Blood Rage. These two gems are very flexible. You don't need them. Uh, the only reasoning for this is when I'm fighting really tanky targets that are not constantly hitting me. The reason I say hitting me is when I get hit with Enduring Composure, I actually generate uh, one Endurance Charge per second. So it's kind of like a pseudo juggernaut. Um, so this really helps with the sustain quite a bit on bosses. Uh, and then, of course, you can hit your Enduring Cry, like I was talking about, to generate those charges back to keep kind of filling up your Immortal Call. Okay, but you don't really need to do that when mapping. It's just like, you know, a really, really tanky mob that you're kiting, for example, right? Next up, Helmet. Uh, I actually did not Essence of Horror craft this. Instead, I used Harvest. It's the new method I'm going to try for SSF. Um, and essentially what I'm doing is... Just going to my bench and I doing do uh, Reforge Fire and trying to hit Honk Effect and Burning. I got very lucky here and hit Resistance and Life Regen. Called it a day. Pretty happy with it. Um, over here, I currently have Awaken Swift Affliction, Righteous Fire, Awaken Deli Focus, and Life Tap. Shield, you have defensive options. Um, one key thing with this build is you want to get a Shock Avoid Shield uh, because we do not run Tempest Shield. You can if you want to. I prefer not to. So I am currently running a Dawnbreaker with the uh, physical death, or sorry, Dawnbreaker with the um, uh, lightning avoidance setup here. This character is not using a Storm Shroud, so nothing crazy. The reasoning on Dawnbreaker is it's just a very good defensive shield, not really anything else to it. Amulet, I just have a dot multi amulet with essentially life. Um, the Ash Frost and Storm doesn't need to be there. What you could do for a lot more single target is drop maybe like some life nodes come down here grab this wheel anoint charisma and then plug in a jewel so i could redo this for reservation and you actually get like a 30 percent damage multiplier because you get skinner bot but because i'm focused more on mapping i did not really bother with that uh rings are quite literally just res rings i could delirium craft them but nothing crazy here just res rings um body armor this is where i've got my fire trap so it's got awakens with affliction trap in mind life tap empower only level three right now um, awaken burning not level five so it doesn't trigger the plus one uh, and then my fire trap which is 21. over on my boots uh, i went ahead and went with a percentage life regen roll on the fracture mainly because i'm not using fractured gloves for life regen so i've kind of swapped those around so my boots you want to make sure you have scorch ground on them scorch is a damage multiplier for single target right so life res regeneration right onslaught on kill uh, over here, we've got Faster Attack, Shield Charge, Frost Blink, and Life Tap. Uh, belt, Immortal Flesh, such a cozy belt. Um, the character gets really high life regen. I actually, this is not with the 20% recovery, so it's closer to like, I guess, 25, 2600. And then with Flasks on, it goes up to 3k. So it's kind of like 2.5k net regeneration, maybe a little bit higher even. So pretty solid. Uh, and then, of course, my gloves, Assonance, where I've got the Divergent Herald of Ash. Regular works just fine. Uh, determination malevolence and enlighten um you, you don't need enlighten i know i'm using it but the enlighten is just saving me one skill point right here um i just bought an enlighten to flip and then just figured why not save a skill point with it so it doesn't really do much right now there, there's a lot more min max you can do again but just kind of wanted to have fun with the character yep uh with that being said the only other thing that i did forget to mention i do apologize is uh i did snag myself for about a divine um, Forbidden Flesh and Flame Unbreakable on Juggernaut. Um, you don't really need this. It does massively help the character with elemental mitigati uh, mitigation, but not against super big hits, just more against, like, honestly, at this point, elemental attacks is what it has been helping me mitigate. But it's not something that's mandatory at all. I, I could fairly confidently level the character to 100 without them. It's just another defensive layer to add in. Um, but it really actually wasn't as big as I thought when I looked at it in POB. The, the elemental mitigation, I guess, because I, I don't have nearly as much armor as I'd like, it's not really anything incredible. Um, so these easily could be replaced with, like, potentially even just, like, a Watcher's Eye. Um, I don't know what I would want on the Watcher's Eye for Ellie mitigation. Or you could just use two 7% life jewels with, uh, with damage, right? And that's another 14% life. That's actually pretty impactful on this character. Yep, that pretty much summarizes the build. Uh, I did actually also want to drop this bottom section, potentially go into like another cluster jewel setup, but I don't know, Solo Steel was hard to drop. The character's lacking max res, so I decided to kind of keep that. 
Um, my Pantheons are currently on a Brine King and Rolakesh. Kind of can't remove Brine King unless I had a Storm Shroud because I am not immune to Freeze. And I actually think that's everything I could possibly tell you guys. Only other thing would be, I guess, showing my, my damage and hideout. Gone. So with no Frenzy Charges and not level 5 Awakened Gems on my Fire Trap, it is rocking 817k. Fairly confident it would be 1 million if I had a uh, Burn Damage level 5 within Power 4. And then on Righteous Fire, which is pretty set up because I do have the level 5 Awakened Ellie Focus. Uh, Righteous Fire is currently rocking... 773k character's pretty fun man it's a lot of, very enjoyable anyway that's pretty much about it i don't think i'm going to be playing the character much longer i'm probably going to ding it to 99 and then get ready for a solo self found run so hope you guys enjoyed the video if you did please feel free to like share and subscribe and don't forget you can catch me streaming live every day at twitch.tv slash pox but sundays take care everyone see you guys all tomorrow